In this video, I'm going to show you recommended EQ settings for Pulse Elite, Story Games, Shooter, Footsteps in Call of Duty, Music, Movies, 3D Audio, Dolby Atmos, and many more. Let's get started. First, let's talk about Story Games. There are two kinds of settings I recommend. One is for a stereo mix and the other for 3D Audio. I've tested over 50 games in the last year that supported 3D Audio natively and some didn't at all. It's a personal choice if you like stereo output or 3D audio, but here's my recommended EQ if you play with a stereo output. This EQ targets to give you a balanced output and maximize the details you get in the games. If you play with 3D audio, as I tested too many games like God of War, Returnal, Spider-Man 2, and many more, I've made a general 3D audio EQ for Pulse Elite which has a lower bass. If you play a game and you feel bass isn't strong enough, increase this value. If you feel the audio is muffled in low frequencies, you can increase the low by 1 decibel too. The next EQ is for music and movies. This is my recommended EQ if you listen to music or watch movies with this headset. It's not targeting neutral audio, but trying to give you a more immersive output compared to that. Next up, EQ settings for shooter games. I will show you Call of Duty settings too, but this is in general for most shooter games. If you play on a stereo, this is my recommended EQ for shooter. And if you use 3D audio, a lower bass EQ is recommended. For example, Overwatch 2 or Apex Legends. If the bass was weak, try increasing it. But what about Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone 3? I tested the game with Pulse Elite specifically to see how the directional sound and 3D audio work on this headset. Of course, it's not dependent on the headset itself. I would highly suggest TV mode or soundboard mix in the game if you want the loudest footstep sounds. Otherwise, if you feel things are getting blended, try headphones mix. I'd also suggest using the bone conduction headset perk, which helps to reduce other effects and give you a much better directional sound. It's highly recommended. For the Pulse Elite, this is my recommended EQ for 3D audio. The treble depends on the mix you use and your hearing. It's more objective, but give it a try. And if you play with the stereo audio, this is my recommended EQ settings, both with linear PCM in the audio output section. Let me know how it works for you. The next EQ is dedicated to native Dolby Atmos mix support. Some games like Spider-Man 2 support Dolby Atmos natively with a special mix for cinematics. So it may not be worth using a specific EQ just because of cinematics, but if you'd like to maximize your experience, this is my recommended EQ. However, it depends on the game if they provide surround audio in Dolby Atmos when the headset is connected. Because as I noticed, the 3D audio for headphones provides a much better mix and dynamic range in many games. This EQ is in case you don't want to use 3D audio and you are sure the game has a Dolby Atmos mix which is applied to the headphones too. Or you have a DAC and a headset that supports Dolby Atmos decoding. To be honest, there aren't many games on PS5 that support Dolby Atmos for headphones. I haven't found any officially. My main recommendation is using 3D audio whenever a game supports that natively in a good way. Now I want to be honest with you. Is it worth it to upgrade? from Pulse 3D to Pulse Elite. There are three main factors to consider. The first one is the audio quality. I've been using over seven headphones for years, in-zone series, pulse series, monitoring wired headphones, and many more. When it comes to details and audio quality, the drivers play 80% of the game, meaning you can try using EQ settings, adjusting them, and trying to make them sound better or similar to other headphones, but it will never be as good. So if a headset doesn't sound good to you, you can make it better by 20% in my opinion, like with EQ and other stuff but the rest comes with the driver and the design. Pulse Elite has a much better neutral sound by default and the details are improved over Pulse 3D. The bass is still not perfect, especially in lower frequencies, but it still sounds much better. If you want to hear the details and effects that you could never hear with Pulse 3D, this is a good upgrade. No matter what EQ you use for Pulse 3D, you'd always feel the difference when you use Pulse Elite. The second one is the comfort. Both Pulse 3D and Pulse Elite are comfortable headphones compared to other mid-range headsets. But if you remember, I had an issue where Pulse 3D would hurt the outer part of my ears. Pulse Elite got improved a little bit, but it still hurts. Let me tell you this way, if Pulse 3D hurts after 2 hours, Pulse Elite hurts after 3 hours. Of course, it depends on your head and your ear shape. But if it did hurt in the past with Pulse 3D, it's gonna hurt again with Pulse Elite. It's a little bit better, but it still hurts. The third one is the microphone quality. They both sound similar, but Pulse Elite sounds a bit sharper at higher frequencies. It's not a huge or noticeable upgrade. And there is a problem with that, which I tell you about it soon. So if the microphone matters to you a lot, this headset is not a good upgrade. 
I'm planning to cover EQ settings for every game I play in shorts on this channel. I put a playlist in cards so you can follow them. As I turned off notifications for shorts, you may not notice it. So check shorts from time to time. You ask for Rainbow Six specific EQ for footsteps with pulse a lit. Here's my recommended EQ specifically for Rainbow Six Siege on PS5 with dynamic range on TV mode. Of course, if you feel it's not loud enough, you can try night mode. Ask your questions in the comments and I'll cover it in the next video. But going back to Pulse Elite, there was a problem when I bought it and most typical gamers won't notice it if they don't test it the way I showed you in this video. I highly suggest you to check that and return your Pulse Elite if you have the same problem.